have to fear for their life almost all the time. Good, hello you guys, it's Shina and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, make sure you put that subscribe button in the snoot and we'll get on to the video. So as we know, gerbils are social animals, but they can also become social with their environment. Although they can only speak fluently with each other and other gerbils, they can also begin to understand you by the tone of voice that you use if you make it a habit to use a certain voice with them and also a certain noise. I usually make a clicking sound with my mouth to indicate that it's food time, which I'm not going to show right now because that would be cruel. <laughs> but they will, if you make this a routine and a habit, they will begin to understand what it means. So for example, if you talk to them and use a certain noise every single time that you're about to feed them. They'll get excited and they'll come out of wherever they are. They'll know what you're trying to say is indicating food time. They can also adapt to the sounds or noises of things around them, so it doesn't only necessarily have to be your voice. Uh, if you make it a habit to do things where their enclosure is, consistently and repetitively, they will begin to understand what those things mean. If you make it a habit to open your curtains or blinds if you have them in the morning when the sunlight or when the sky is open, <laughs> they will begin to understand that means it's time to start the day. They might even look forward to it and get out of their bedding if they're in their bedding. And in a way, you can even use this as their own alarm clock. And if you keep using your voice as a positive thing and nothing that they have to fear, they will begin to trust and look forward to hearing your voice and everything around them. Gerbils are super social with their environment and that includes you. Even if we can't communicate fluently, we can communicate in our own ways with them and to help them feel safe. It can also be used to help them calm down. For example, sometimes small noises or random noises scare my gerbils because that's inevitable. <laughs> They're prey animals and they get scared very easily. But you can actually talk or use your voice to get them to calm down and they'll stop thumping their feet. I have calmed them down just by being like, hey, it's me. Now, while gerbils have a clear vision for things that are far away, they cannot see very well when things are up close. So when you are going to give your gerbil food or clean their enclosure, it can be very scary for them because they can't really recognize you visually. And so they have to try and identify by scent and a lot of the time that means they're also going to try and nibble to see if they recognize you and to know if you are danger. Now since they are prey animals this is a handicap for them in the wild not so much in captivity however they don't know that. They have to fear for their life almost all the time. It's kind of sad. <laughs> oh no. But in the wild, they won't nibble a predator to see if it's okay because obviously that would just not be okay. They're already too close. However, if they know your voice and you're using it and they're still a little bit nervous, they'll just nibble on you to see. Now, gerbils don't control how hard they nibble on you and sometimes they don't even know how much pressure they're using unless they feel like they're in danger and they're trying to hurt you. It's just important to calmly remove your finger or push them very gently so that they know that that's not okay. <laughs> Squeaking can also be normal for gerbils. Healthy way for gerbils to express irritation. Yes, squeaking does mean that they are annoyed but mild annoyance is perfectly normal for gerbils to experience, especially with the other gerbils or even you. For example, if your gerbil is just vibing with life and trying to eat a piece of food that he is enjoying or she uh, or they, um, then they would be annoyed if the other gerbil <laughs> was trying to steal that piece of food. I would squeak too if somebody was trying to steal food out of my mouth. Gerbil might squeak to communicate that they're really annoyed with that gerbil, like, please don't take my food. And there could be a little bit of chasing. Now, this doesn't mean that it's an aggressive chase and that they're going to fight. This could just be the other gerbil really wanting that piece of food from them, even if it means stealing. 
But as soon as the other gerbil has hurried up and ate the piece, if it's gone, the gerbil just walks away. So it doesn't always mean that it's going to be an aggressive fight. Now they can squeak in fights, so if they are fighting, fighting, you'll know. They might also squeak because the other gerbil is invading their space, even if they aren't eating something. Sometimes the gerbil thinks that they are eating something and they'll try to see what that is and the gerbil's like, please don't, there's nothing here. <laughs> Squeaking can be a very normal way of expressing their annoyance with the world. <laughs> gerbils are known as diurnal or awake during the day, but they actually nap more than they sleep. They take constant naps rather than a heavy sleep throughout the whole day and night. In captivity, gerbils can be out and about without risking the expense of their life, <laughs> and they do get to know that the longer they are in that enclosure and more comfortable with their environment. So you'll often see sometimes they might even nap above the bedding during the day and only use the nighttime to be more secure than that. Like with my gerbils, they always nap above the bedding during the day, but in the night they go down and usually stay there. Sometimes they'll go for water and then they'll just go right back. And gerbils might also adapt to your own schedule because they know during the day is when I'm going to mostly feed them their food or any kind of treats or interact with them and all the good stuff. So they know that the daytime is a good time to be out because it's useful for them. <laughs> in the wild, gerbils keep everything in their burrows and their chambers of their burrows. So that's why gerbils try a lot to cover everything and bedding and put everything down there. But if you make it a way that it's just not possible for them to do that, they cannot bury their wheel or their water or their sand, then they will just accept it and they will have to go to those things rather than keep it in a place where those things wouldn't even work anymore. They don't know that it wouldn't work down there. However, start to be comfortable with the idea of getting out more and be okay with being out in the open. My gerbils also redecorate a thousand times a day. It's interesting to see how they still really work hard on those chambers and it's still very important to have bedding and a depth so they can do those natural instincts. But they really only take consistent short naps throughout the entire time of their life. Maybe a bit more so when they are older and young babies. <laughs> because when you're older you just become a baby again, basically. But on weekends they stay awake a lot longer because I am awake a lot longer and I'm playing games all through 1 a.m. 2 a.m. and so they're being crazy and running on the wheel and just decorating. Fun to see that kind of behavior. Gerbils also chew things for a purpose. Chewing wood, leaves, foraging material like hay and cardboard are all important for enrichment and keeping their teeth filed, but gerbils often do this for other reasons. Gerbils spend a lot of time working on their tunneling system. They will break down what they find useful to try and to use and improve their burrows. Having a well-working cage topper or divider is so vital because you need to keep them from trying to break down or take down the wheel sand bath and water down into those chambers. They want to use it in other ways that they are not supposed to be meant to be. They were not meant to be used that way. But you can also use this information to your advantage. Now, wooden wheels are my favorite wheels to use for gerbils, but a lot of people's concern with them is that they will chew it and destroy it and it was just not worth the money. But you can put it in a place, like if it's divided from the bedding or on the cage topper, then they won't feel that it's worth it to try and break down the whole wheel to try and create bedding on that side as well or bring it to the other side of bedding. It's just a lot and they'll just accept it and they'll start using it for what it's meant to be used as. And especially with wooden wheels, if you're worried about the chewing, as long as it's divided, they'll stop chewing it eventually because they'll realize that it's just not worth the effort. Put it in a place where they're not going to chew it because it can't really function for them the way they want it to. And the same can be said for anything that you want to use but you don't want it to be buried in the bedding. You just put it on that side as long as they can't 
break it down or form a new place of bedding or burrows, then you will be perfectly safe to use it. They went, they might try and they will probably nibble from time to time, but they really won't do much with it. Gerbils also wink. They can wink at you and this is to show you that they are being friendly and appreciative of what you are doing or just being around you. They wink even at you or other gerbils to show that they really like you and it's the sweetest thing. It's their simple way of communicating approval and gratitude. <laughs> gerbils jump for joy or for danger. Now, Gerbils are high jumpers for several different reasons. They might short hop, jump sideways, or dash hop around in excitement. High jumps are also usually a message for attention. The enclosure's lid for your attention or to show that they are very bored. It can be a number of reasons why they're trying to get out. But they also use jumping a lot as a way to express to you and to get a reaction from a gerbil or you for food or attention, maybe their water needs refilling, it just is a way of communicating <laughs> and it's kind of a more playful way of communicating for them. However, that being said, thumping or drumming their feet is a signal and a sign of them telling the other gerbils or even you that there is danger or they think there is danger and to be alert and to hide and to be safe rather than sorry. I do also want to mention, however, if you do notice that your gerbil is constantly trying to get to the lid of your enclosure or is just way too close to their access, it usually means that you need to put more bedding in for them or put a little less so they can't get to the lid and just because they're just too curious about chewing their way through it. Another gerbil behavior is cuddling. Bonded pairs or trios like to cuddle. Since gerbils are social animals, they appreciate and often look for attention. They may even accept being around your person and can even fall asleep on you if they really do trust you. Don't be discouraged if your gerbils are not that comfortable with you. They are naturally prey animals and so they really do try to be more precautious about anything so I wouldn't take it too personally. Just try to do the best you can and understand what they want from you. <laughs> gerbils also assign roles. As we know, gerbils create clans in the wild and in captivity, we kind of are creating their clan for them. If they are siblings, they were already in a clan, but they still have to decide their place in that. Now, in captivity, it can be a little bit different on what they decide to settle for. Once established, though, you'll notice that one may like to be more in control of designing the layout of their burrows. Another or the other might be the follower and just try to mostly follow what the other gerbil or gerbils are doing. And of course, even in just a pair, one will be the leader. The leader usually decides to do whatever they want, but they also help their group feel safe. They are the first to check if it's okay to be out in the open and let the other gerbils know that it is okay. And they will also be the designated gerbil to tell and let the other gerbils know that danger is gone if they thought or if danger was near. Now in captivity, if a clan decides to have a dispute because sometimes gerbils will want to be the leader or if the leader or another gerbil becomes weak, they will want to take advantage of that to change the roles of their clan. Now in the wild, they can simply rush another gerbil out of the clan if they disagree completely, but in captivity, they're led to fight to death because they can't really escape. So you do want to make sure that you are checking constantly their interactions and seeing that they are not challenging anybody's normal behavior of that clan that's normal for them. This can be a really good way for you to avoid or to realize when the clan is breaking up or it's just not working anymore. And I keep mentioning only pairs or trios because they are the safest to attempt to keep in captivity or in an enclosure. I wouldn't recommend anymore because there's just too many roles to be assigned and not 
knowing what they want and if they will agree all the time. The last behavior I want to talk about that you'll notice for gerbils is their play fighting and grooming. Bonded pairs or trios confide in each other for playtime or attention. They may box, wrestle, or cuddle as a way of spending time together and to have fun. Since gerbils are desert animals, they rely on sand, but also their friends to thoroughly clean themselves. And you'll notice that gerbils will often groom each other by going through their face and trying to pick out any residue that they find or around their fur coat. You definitely don't want to see aggressive non-stop chasing because then that means it's a fight and not just attention seeking. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys learned something and are able to understand your gerbils better. Comment down below with one behavior you notice from your gerbils and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.